There are times when you want to make a part of your model protected so that it won't be affected by any sculpting or editing. This is often done with masking and I know we have been going through masking in our previous classes and I have promised you that I will go in detail about the masking. So in this lesson we will learn the basics of the masking. It's one of the most commonly used features in ZBrush. So let's dive in. Now most basic way to create a mask is to simply paint it. And this is done by holding the control key on your keyboard, okay, and then just paint it on, and you will see a gray area, a gray uh, mask has been painted. So right now I'm in symmetry mode, so on both sides is painted. And this actually works, let me make the big brush size bigger, because it works with the uh, your brush size. If you brush size bigger, bigger mask will be created. If you have, uh, you know, uh, more softer uh, focal shift so will, you will have sh soft edges if you have a you know harsh or sharp focal shift so it will create something like sharper so that's how it works the like the masking here Let me do it again and you can see the mask is now sharper on the edges so you can see this effect if I will uh, subdivide this uh, two three times and now if I will do this you can see that how the sharp the mask is with the focal shift so right now i'm changing the uh, the masks uh, property here because if you will press control and you will try to change this you are changing the mask property not the brush property so now i will do with my focal shift to zero and you can see the edges are smoother if i will go more more higher here so you will see it will be more smoother so i will keep this zero and all the time uh, uh, when i was doing this one my finger was on the control key because if I will leave my control key I will not be in the mask mode anymore okay so let me do that here to go back so this was like uh, a simple basic way to draw a mask so let's see we want to protect uh, this correct uh, this uh, uh, nose of this uh, like uh, face over here so what i can do over here is that simply i can go back to my and change everything here i will make my brush size a little smaller and then i can press control key here and paint over his nose nicely i can also turn on my uh, lazy mouse if i feel my hand is not smooth enough okay so now his nose is protected as you can see here so if i will take my uh any brush tool like maybe i will take the clay club uh like clay build up tool and if i will start drawing over here on this character's uh, head you will notice that the sides of the sorry the nose which is protected with the mask is not getting affected okay somewhere on the side because of the fall off but you can see that it's pretty much doing its job and one more thing here i can do let me undo this what i have done i can invert this mask how to invert the mask remember when we were working on hiding and unhiding what we were doing was that we were uh you know when we whenever we wanted to invert our uh selection we just have to uh, we were just about to press control shift and drag and it inverts our selection but here it's opposite we don't control uh, we don't control shift and drag we just simply click control and click anywhere outside and that will uh, basically invert our selection now if i will do any changes here it will be only on the nose because nose is selected and rest is not selected okay and if i want to clear the whole mask i don't want to see the mask so control and drag outside any open space area and it will remove the mask so it's quite opposite and the selection you press control shift and drag to invert but to uh, clear your selection 
you press Control Shift and click. But here, to invert, I press Control and click. But to clear my mask, I press Control Shift and drag. So it's quite you know opposite what you do in selection and what do you do here. So as you know, I was just uh, pressing Control and you know painting over it here, right over the mask or, or like right over this head. But what if I will start painting on him, not on the from the surface, but from here. So if I will press Control and then start painting, so just notice it will not start painting; it will start making a rectangular mask over here. And when I will leave my mouse button, so you can see because of the symmetry, it made that selection both sides. Okay, so. Now, if I will do the, some changes, so it will not affect this area. So I hope you have understood about this. This is the same way that you do inside your uh, selection mode. So, you know, you just have to press Control Shift in the selection and you do that just like this one here. Okay. But actually, I have to be in the rectangle just like that. Here also, you press Control and you just do with this. So mask works only with the control. Selection is control shift. So you can create that, okay, just like this one. If uh, if I will make a mask over here, you will notice that the edges are quite harsh and sharp because I was creating a box over here. So it's pretty hard border around it. So what we could do is to go to our masking option, which is down here. And when we will click on it, we will get a bunch of masking options over here. So we can uh, play with these settings and we can uh, customize it. So for example, we can blur the border of this mask, but, uh, this, you know, this hard mask. How? just by clicking the blur mask when i will click over here so you can see it has blurred it out and when i will draw over here so there will be quite transaction or like uh, sorry a quite transition over here so this will this usually uh, helps you to create a smooth transition between your changer and, and that if it is blurred out but if it is sharp you will see abrupt change which i usually don't recommend so uh this is how you can uh, do the blurring over here and uh, you'll notice we get a nice strong effect if uh, like suppose uh, let me do one more thing i will blur it and once it is blurred you will notice if i will press sharpen mask you will get a nice sharp effect again if i keep on sharpening it up so sharpening will do the opposite over here so let me uh, zoom out from here and also let me clear the mask here. So there are a couple of other ways to use masks. I want to show you right now. So if you hold the, the control key, you can go here in your mask option here. So you have, so it's above here. Okay, and you have here mask, mask circle, mask curve, and all these other ones. The one that we are using right now is the mask pen. Okay, so if I will go in the mask circle, what it usually do is that it can just create a circle, and that circle can become your mask. Okay, so it also affects the back side of the area if you are just making it with the symmetry. So I will turn off the symmetry. And you can see that it is affecting the back uh, only this side now. Okay. Uh, but if you don't want that simple, what you can do is that you can turn off the back facing. Okay. Just like what we did before uh, in the previous lesson. Now, if you are creating a circle, you can still just like the selection, you can press uh, space bar and you can move around this wherever you want. Okay. And now if you don't want this part, you can just, um, you know, remove this mask, okay? To remove the mask, suppose I want to use my mask pen. And uh, to remove any mask, what you have to, have to do is that press Control and also Alt. 
So with the control and alt, if you will paint over, it will remove that. So you can remove the selection that you don't want. So that's pretty much you can do with the control alt if you want to remove the mask, any sort of mask. Okay. So that's with the control and then uh, the mask of uh, mask circle. Now let me do one thing. Let me remove this the whole thing here. And let me zoom in so I can show you the other uh, masking option. Now here we have uh, one pretty uh, interesting one, which is mask curve. So if I will take the mask curve and draw over here, you can see that it is creating a dotted line with a you know blackish part on the top. So if I will leave this one, suppose somewhere here. My if I will leave my mouse left button, okay. So what it will do here is that it will create a mask over that top gray line, okay. That uh, faded gradient line that I was showing you around. So this top gray line, if you will see that this uh, faded gray uh, or black, you can say color, that is representing the mask. So mask will be created on the top area. One more thing I can do here is that if it is straight and you don't want to create straight, so you can, wherever you want a curve, you can go to that point and press Alt on your keyboard and it will create a curve. And keep on adding Alt will keep on add, uh, adding curve at that point. But if you feel that you don't want a curve, you want a sharp corner, so press Alt twice and it will create sharp corners just like this. And one time it will give a smooth curve. Now, if you're ready, just leave your mouse here and it will create the curve based on the way you have drawn your thing. So, this is quite, uh, you can say, interesting way to create a mask. Okay, so you can see how I got this mask, and then you know, I can paint over in whatever I want to do. And let's see the other way here. Let me do one thing here. Let me clear this off you can also press this clear button if you want let's suppose if i don't want to clear from uh, clicking and dragging with control i can just press clear here now here is the lasso lasso is basically uh you know just like you can clear make a free form drawing here and that's it okay and then we have here a mask pen that we were using uh, like before then we have here perfect circle. What it will do is that it will not make it oval. It will just make it a perfect circle with a space bar. Also, you can move it. Okay, so you cannot make it oval. It will be always a perfect circle. So sometimes you might use the perfect circle for some reason. And we have here mass rectangle. Okay, so wherever I am, it will create a mass rectangle because if I'm using a mask pen, okay, it will start drawing over here. But if I'm creating from outside, it will give me the rectangle view, okay. But if I'm using the mask rectangle from uh, this option, wherever I am, whether I am on the top of my uh, model or away from the model, it will always create a, a rectangle. Okay, it, and it will override that mask pen thing. So clear it up. And the last one is the mask square. So it will give me a perfect square. Okay, and you can, with the space bar, you can move this one as well. So this is how you can use these maskings over here. Now, sometimes you want your uh, mask to grow. Like suppose if I have some kind of a mask over here, and I want to grow this mask. So if I will go to my settings here, you will see there's a grow masks uh, here. So if I will keep on clicking that couple of times, so what it will do is that it will grow my ma mask. So you can see that it is growing this up, but I have to click, you know, twice or thrice, and you can see that how it is being uh, like grown now. Okay. And if you think it is not sharp you can just click on the sharpen mask okay and you have a sharper mask but if 
you don't want this to grow you can always shrink the mask so if you will press the shrink button so you can see the mask is now shrinking okay so you have to press uh it a lot sometimes it becomes to like uh you know uh, tricky to do that but when you will press the sharpen mask button you will see where you are heading so let me do some a uh, couple of other masks over here okay and you know something like this i will create maybe here as well maybe here a little bit and make them sharpen all of them now let's say we want to sculpt with this now and maybe the masking is kind of in the way maybe it's color of uh you know obtrusive discoloration the gray dark color makes it hard to see what we are sculpting so you can temporarily turn that off by clicking on the view mask so here we have this view mask button if i will turn this off it will only turn the masking off but the effect will be there so let's see if i will start drawing so you can see that the mask is already there but it's only hidden so this uh, will help you you know to get the masking out of your way so you can see actually how the result will be because sometimes what happens it's kind of annoying when you have the mask because uh, it's a darker color not matching with your uh, you know the whole object itself so this is how you can turn it off and if you want to turn uh, to bring it back you just click and, and it will be back okay so that's the basis of masking this is really helpful for keeping parts of the model protected so that you don't have to worry about messing up uh, with them while working on the other parts the trickiest part about this is remembering these shortcuts for inverting the mask control click and drag in an open area will get rid of any masking and if i had control z to undo that we'll do control click in an open area to invert that okay so if that's too tricky you can just use inverse clear under the masking menu here to invert okay just like this or what you can do is that if you want to clear just press the clear button okay so if you can't remember these shortcuts you can do this so now there's more advanced tricks that can be done but this is the most of what you want to do on a regular basis so I hope you have understood about the masking over here. So for long, I was promising you so that we will move to the masking, we will move to the masking. And finally, we have done the masking. And hopefully in future, we will uh, learn uh, the, uh, like, you know, some advanced masking like technique as well. So guys, if you have liked my video, please click on the like button. And if you have any questions, you can uh, leave in the comment section. And I hope you have enjoyed my video. So please subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed to it yet. And also, if you have your social media account, please free, uh, feel free to share my, uh, you know, the channel on your YouTube account. And, you know, as many followers I will have, as many subscribers, as many views I will have, it will motivate me to create more and more advanced tutorials in future. So guys, uh, take care and we'll meet in the next lesson. And till then, Enjoy and take care. Bye, everyone.